Just making a video on installing a Tesla K80 in a Dell PowerEdge server. There are some caveats that you need to be aware of before doing this. First thing is, this Tesla K80 does not use a standard 6-pin PCI Express connector. This is actually a 12-volt EPS power connector like what CPUs use. This aftermarket cable I bought on eBay is a copy of the original Dell GPU power cable. It is wired correctly for standard GPUs, but it is not wired correctly for the Tesla K80, and I believe there's a few other Tesla cards that use the 12 volt EPS. So when putting a Tesla card in your server, you really want to make sure that it, the card is powered the way you think it does. Because this cable is not keyed correctly for 8 pin PCI Express power. If, if you use this aftermarket cable with a Tesla K80, what you will end up doing is you'll short your 12 volt power to ground. I unfortunately found this out from experience. It doesn't appear to have damaged my server. I have yet to determine the condition of the card. The card still does work because I did test it in a desktop, but the desktop wasn't capable of running the card because the motherboard in it was too old but yeah so if you use the wrong cable with the Tesla K80 you end up shorting it to ground what happens is when you plug your server in the power supplies and the motherboard will do its little initialization process and then the power supply lights will start blinking I wasn't sure what was going on when I was dealing with this my card did come with some shipping damage, so I thought maybe it was the card, or maybe it was the slot. Because I initially started in this slot, and then I moved it over to this slot. Luckily, after the fourth time of it not working and producing the same results, I decided to do some research. Also, the fourth time, I happened to grab the power cord for the card because I was going to disconnect it. And the wires were hot. Not like burning hot, but like, oh my, why are these wires higher than room temperature hot? And that's because it was shorting 225 watts of 12 volt power to ground. Um, I have read stuff saying that the connector on the riser card is 12 volt EPS, but that is not correct based on some probing with the multimeter and also looking at how this, this uh, adapter is wired. So these are the front views of the connectors and on the Dell riser card cable you got your three 12 volts, those would be pins one through three, pin four is ground, five through eight is also ground. On an EPS power connector the bottom four is supposed to be ground and the top four is supposed to be 12 volt. So this is not only wrong if, for the people that are calling it 12 volt EPS but it's basically inverted 12 volt EPS with a ground pin on, and pin 8 which technically wouldn't be there if it was 12 volt EPS. I recommend, you know, don't take my word for it. Double check, triple check this for yourself since, you know, done incorrectly this will cause problems. I'm fairly confident in this since I've spent half a day now <laughs> reading up on this and trying to figure out what's going on. Um, my solution has been to rewire a 12 volt EPS power cable from a modular power supply. I don't recommend doing this. I'm taking a risk here because if something goes wrong with my modification, I risk damaging my server and my hardware and even potentially losing data. I did highlight the pins. This is going to be on the Tesla side of things. So those gold pins are the 12 volt, and the bottom pins are ground. And then this matches the pin out of the Dell riser card side of things. I checked it with a meter, I compared it to the cable, and I did power on the server with this end connected and this end loose and checked it with my meter as well. Like I said, definitely do your own, own checking. Don't take my word for it, because this is potentially could go wrong if if you do it wrong. 
on the documentation for the Tesla car, let's we'll look at that straight with the world, um, to use these with a standard power supply that doesn't have an extra EPS 12 volt 8 pin connector, there's a dual PCI Express 8 pin to 12 volt EPS 8 pin connector that you can buy. I don't have the right connectors on this Dell clone adapter. So if you want to use this in a Dell R720, you will have to find either a cable you're willing to modify or if somebody makes an aftermarket cable that is compatible with this card. I have seen some on eBay, but I haven't purchased one yet just because I haven't been able to verify that it's wired correctly just because the pictures don't show it good enough. If this aftermarket modified cable that I made ends up working out, I may consider buying one that's made properly. I believe there are companies that make custom cables like this, so I could probably get one made that would be pinned correctly. But, that aside, the installation of the card is pretty simple. First you want to make sure your power is unplugged, of course. Let your power supply sit for a few seconds, discharge. You have to remove this slot cover retention bracket and then the expansion slot covers. It is helpful to remove this mid retention bracket which just lifts straight up. Also you got this blue, you can call it button here, that pushes down the side retention piece for the stabilization mount. From there, oh, in my case and probably in most people's cases, you want to probably plug in your power connector first just because it's going to be under the cord or card. So I'm going to do that real quick. And also, worth mentioning, different size of these cables are going to go to specific parts. So this side of the cable is my Dell riser side and this side is my Tesla side. So that's something, a distinction you'll want to make as well. Due to the cable length, I am going to have to do some cable routing that's probably a little different than normal. Just going to place it under there like that and hope that it doesn't restrict too much airflow. From there, put the card in. Not quite flat, but not, not quite at a, an angle either. You want to line it up with the slot and then once it's lined up, you can flatten it out. Make sure that this support bracket lines up with the slot in there. I like to support the back side of the riser card with one hand and then top of the card with the other. The hands are also long enough so I kind of will reach over with the thumb. Then you just push it in until it locks into place. Once you get locked into place, push down on this, which will put that arm back out and then it should lock into the support bracket on the other side. Take your mid support push that down there and then in my case I'm going to route the cable through that little s slot right here plug it in now that the cable is routed the way I want it I'm going to push this blue button here which will release this mid support but I don't like to let these slam into the side of the card so I just put my finger in there and gently let it go into place Probably won't hurt the card, but there's no reason to let it just slam it inside your card since it is a fairly strong spring. Finally, take your locking bracket for the faceplate of the card, push that in, and it's mounted. Your system may look different depending on the cable you use. Ideally, the cable would be a little shorter, but I'm working with what I have. And then from there, it should just be a matter of plugging it in. And to prove that my cable's not wired incorrectly, I'll provide power. And time to power it on. Will the magic smoke come out? 
it's shut it. <laughs> and there you have it. Hopefully a happy fart. The next step will be setting it up after the life cycle controller figures out what hardware I've added. Thanks for watching.